Thoughts on The Clone Wars Season 7, The Final Season. So, as usual, spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including this season. Keeping in mind that this season aired, like, I want to say 2020, so I will be spoiling, like, Solo, for example. I loved each, you know, yeah, I love all the episodes of this show. This video will be my riffs and analysis for the season, not a review. I will be doing a spoiler-free review probably later today, now that I have watched all of the show. Since I won't get into the following in every single episode section in this video, I will just briefly say that every episode has great creativity and designs, the action is engaging, very well choreographed, I'm invested in the stories and characters. Anything I don't comment on, presume I approve of, not that this is only going to be negative, and I will be talking about the messages it communicates. So, first episode of the season, The Bad Batch. So, yeah, this season, as the only season of the show, was made for Disney+, Plus. other than the three seasons of The Mandalorian. I would argue that the live-action Star Wars that was made for Disney+, Plus is padded. Uh, the seasons are too long. I don't, th I don't think that's true of this. I did see some people not feeling like the, the season needed to have 12 episodes, which was probably, like basically mandated. I felt like they had enough to justify it. And yes, I realized that this season was produced and aired on Disney Plus after some of the other animated Disney Plus Star Wars shows, but I googled it, and as far as I could tell, it's fine to watch this one before those. It's not like with Marvel Netflix, where if you don't watch them in the order that they premiered on Netflix, you'll be confused. So, into the specific notes for the episode. They can predict, anticipate, and adapt to our attacks. Borg? Star Wars Star Trek crossover confirmed? At first it sounds like Survivor's Guild, but actually he thinks Echo might still be alive. 99 Bad Batch Troopers. So the Bad Batch are a small team of effective, unusual individuals. Very original trilogy and sequel trilogy Star Wars. Something I felt was lacking when a lot of the battles were made up of mostly Jedi and clones. The algorithm, so they're killing to become internet famous? That might actually work. So these couple of episodes are basically a spin-off pilot. I really look forward to watching the show itself. And the signal suggests that Echo is indeed alive. And that's why the next episode is called A Distant Echo. This might be the first time that I find Anakin and Padme sweet together in this show, so yeah. Appreciate it. I know you are, but what am I? And Obi-Wan reveals he does know that they're together. Very cool when they free Anakin and we learn that it's a misunderstanding. They think that they're stopping the war by capturing him. Let's split up. I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Man, the Bad Batch's unique skills really do come in handy a lot of times over these couple of episodes. I'm not d disapproving. Which brings us to the next episode on the wings of Kiradax. Echo unplugs, looking like someone who's been unplugged from the Matrix. Incredibly tense when they're on the pipes and they fly off, but the droids fly after. Which brings us to episode four, Unfinished Business. Wrecker keeps hoping he'll get to blow up the droid ships, and at the end he does. Mace Windu is like, I accept your surrender. And we see the wrecking ball and reflecting shots. Really effective. Very, very cool. That still only counts as one. And the episode ends with Echo joining the Bad Batch, which does make a lot of sense. Which brings us to the fifth episode, Gone with a Trace. So this is the start of the Martinez sisters arc. I largely liked it. There was a little bit of bickering that I found kind of frustrating, but yeah, by and large, liked it. And yeah, we hear some of the original trilogy score not long before Ahsoka crashes, and we learn that Trace has a negative perception of the Jedi. 
Trace Ahsoka Katano beat up Pintu and his goons. Very tense, suspenseful, and cool when the droids go haywire. So the episode ends not in a positive or negative way, but with a very morally gray outcome. And next episode, episode 6, Deal No Deal. I appreciate that we're seeing Ahsoka Tano shape a new identity. These episodes have a lot of empathy for the lower class and ethnic minorities, which is very Star Wars. The problems early in flight in this episode feel like forced tension. She didn't have to go in the military lane, for example. And we learn that they're going to Kessel for Spice. So Katano is reluctant to become Spice Girl. And so, yeah, basically the sisters do illegal things to succeed because there is no legal way for them to succeed. So this episode could help encourage empathy. This arc could help encourage empathy among younger viewers, so great. Considering this mature idea, I guess they felt the need to add some goofy child-friendly stuff, like how Trace keeps repeating that it's the fastest ship. Not really a fan of that. We see the slaves are not droids, but organics, which is, again, you know... I mean, it would still be messed up if all of these slaves were, were droids, but in the moment that we are like, oh, they're... You know they're not droids. Now it's uh, it's sad that they're just yeah. No one is taking my ship, so she dumps the spice. It feels like more forced tension. I appreciate that we, the viewer, don't hear the plan right away. We just know that Ahsoka Tano is the only one with faith in it, and the mind trick works on the one person targeted. But uh, understandably, the others realize it's weird, so they look for the spice and. The box is empty. Empty, the opposite of full. This box was supposed to be full. Which brings us to episode 7, Dangerous Debt. We learn that the sisters hate Jedi because when Zero escaped, their parents were collateral damage. American military have caused a lot of collateral damage. It is important to inspire future generations to have empathy for the victims. And the Jedi, they went home. This episode again shows torture to be a tool of evil as well as ineffective. When Rafa says she prefers to talk, that's much more motivating than torture. It's her trying to talk her way out of trouble as usual. But it is also true that talking to suspects the right way is a much more likely way to get credible intel than torture. And the Pikes are willing to torture in order to get spice. Man, they must be really hard up for oregano. Trace faint faints. Kind of annoying when the sister's bigger about who res who's rescuing who. And because Rafa is so drunk... To... I'm going to start that over. Because Rafa is so harsh towards the drunk... Silly goose. Um, I mean, Billy Goat. Alien, he immediately tells the authorities about the instant karma. Again, can help encourage empathy. And the reason that it looked like Ahsoka would be able to rescue the sisters was to draw her out. I really love when the bad guys are smart, too. Episode 8, Together Again. Great plan and great communicating. I'll tell you where their family is from. It sounds like leverage, but the three girls and we, the viewer, know that it's Ahsoka underlining. She does not have leverage over them, telling the sisters not to worry about her in more ways than one. Rafa manages to talk her way out of not having proof they're transporting Spice. And she asks for the manager, a real Karen move. It is confirmed that those of us who have watched Solo new already, and I think it might also be in some of the EU as well, Maul is indeed in charge of the Pikes at this point. Cosmonaut Variety Hour criticized the actions of Maul in hologram form. I think if the end of Solo told us anything about Maul in hologram form, it's that he just likes doing stuff that looks cool, even if it has no impact on the person viewing the hologram. Like, him lighting the lightsaber at the end of Solo, that's just because he likes igniting his lightsaber. I like the fight between the sisters and the manager. And the sisters return to the Pikes with Spice. Spice Girl reunion tour. 
and the sisters win the game of chicken, and at the end, the sisters tell Ahsoka they do like her and respect her and consider her a friend, even though they know she's a Jedi because of her actions. And Bo-Katan gets her to go on another mission. Great hook for the next arc. Which brings us to episode 9, Old Friends Not Forgotten. Very strong introduction to both Obi-Wan and Anakin in this episode to excite the longtime fans who've been waiting for, what was it, like six years for this to come out. So, yeah. No matter what you loved about the first six seasons about the Clone Wars, this delivers at least some of it. Battles on the ground and in space between clones, droids, and Mandalorians, lightsaber battles, Jedi, Anakin and Padme relationship, relationship between Ahsoka Tano and Anakin and Ahsoka Tano and you know, clone troopers, Mandalorians, personal stories, and the gesture with painting the helmets is legitimately very sweet and becomes bitterly ironic when they turn and try to kill her. Obi-Wan and Ahsoka Tano argue, Anakin resolves it. Incredibly cool when Ahsoka Tano is fighting Mandalorians, Mandalorians are fighting each other. And Maul set a trap, managed to lure Ahsoka Tano into it. So this episode takes place right before Revenge of the Sith, because Grievous goes to Coruscant to capture Palpatine. Which brings us to episode 10, The Phantom Apprentice. So, and the, yeah, this episode said, During Revenge of the Sith, we're told Anakin has killed Dooku, Obi-Wan is being sent after Grievous on Utapau. What his true intentions are towards this Republic. Very sense elevator scene. But you must answer me one question. Do those horns go all the way down? Incredibly cool when Ahsoka Tano and Maul are fighting. Which brings us to the penultimate episode, Shattered. Very cool old Mandalorian jailed for force users and we see uh, order 66 for, from Ahsoka's certain point of view and Ahsoka only freed Maul so she could call so he could cause chaos for a diversion not to team up and she doesn't even give him a lightsaber the droids really want to help very sweet and and sad that they end up dead by the end of the episode after this Darth Maul versus clones, really brutal, chopping off limbs, like, you know, he doesn't even need a lightsaber, like, give him, just, yeah, he could just be walking down this hallway, just, you know, telekinetically ripping off panels to cut off, just, yeah. And Ahsoka manages to remove the mind control from Rex, incredibly tense, when he, like, sits up and raises the gun, and it's like, is he going to shoot Ahsoka, or is he going to... Oh, oh, phew. He didn't shoot Ahsoka, he shot the, the other troopers. And... Yeah, that brings us to the finale, victory and death. Very, very tense and suspenseful opening and episode in general. More great mole stuff. And turns out they were waiting for them, and they do the fake, you know, hostage thing. Really, really tense when Ahsoka almost falls out of the, you know, and like one of the droids, like, you know, she she hangs on to the thing from the yeah. And despite. Ahsoka Tano's efforts, Maul does manage to escape. Also really love the stuff with the clones being sent down or up, depending on what was useful. And incredibly tense when Ahsoka manages to get into the ship as it's taking off. We see, all, we see her at all the graves, and we see Vader find her lightsaber and... Yeah, really, really great ending. So, yeah, um, whether we're talking about overall season, season finale, or season opener, I feel like every single season of this show is better than 
the ones before. So, yeah. And I am really, really stoked to... I, I, I'll probably start Rebels later today. And... Let's see... Right, and I wanted to note that, you know, one thing that critics said about this season, you know, some people really didn't like the Martinez sisters arc, and at least one of the people who said that is actually Latina herself, so it's not just, you know, and yeah, I don't, I mean, I feel like the, you know, the choice to make them ethnic minorities makes a lot of sense. There's so many stories where it's like, okay, we should have empathy for poor people, which is always great, but let's make them white, which is like, okay, come on, just so we can only have empathy for white people is what you're saying. Just so frustrating. So I really appreciate. And they're not, they're not victims. You know, they have been made stronger by the experience. I appreciate that, let's say, I, I want to say it's Rafa who's like very, like, she's basically willing to do whatever it takes. You know, she doesn't, and and she really wasn't going to hire Trace, and you end up really understanding why. And Trace is does still have some some optimism, you know. So, and and this is a very credible kind of you know. Like that's that's the thing. Like you know, Rafa feels like well, with their parents gone, the only way to survive is to become very hardened and start doing illegal things, whereas Trace is like, if we stop living what mom would have wanted for us, she is well and truly gone. Like, she's, she's dead, but that doesn't mean she has to be gone forever, you know? So, yeah, really appreciated that. Um, yeah. You know, like I said, I you know I thought the bickering. I guess the fo the force tension bothered me more than the the bickering overall. But yeah, that was really the only stuff. And yeah, I I do really appreciate they got to have personality. You know, that's another thing when something made for white people is trying to encourage empathy for minorities. They might really downplay you know the the stereotypes about but you know here like they're Latina so you have some some sass and you know they are they are really devoted to each other which is of course you know I want to say is that maybe Catholicism but that's certainly you know some Lat and I guess it's also an immigrant thing you know but but yeah fiercely devoted to each other much more so than many white people. So, so yeah. Um, really, really love this show. And I will be doing a review probably. It, uh, yeah, I'll probably record it very, very shortly. There's some chance that by the time I upload this, I might also upload that one immediately. Depends on... Anyway. But, yeah. So... May the force be with you.